Docker is a tool that's designed to make it easier to create, deploy, and run applications. And it does this using containers. Containers allow a developer to package up their application, including the code that they wrote, as well as their dependencies, and ship it as one package. With containers, you can rest assured that not only will your application work in whatever environment it's deployed in, you have the reproducibility to ensure it works consistently. One small side note, if you've heard of Kubernetes, it's a container orchestration system that can use Docker. So if you think about an analogy of a container ship, maybe not the ever given, but a container ship, all the different containers on that ship are like Docker containers. But that's for a whole different video. Let's jump into talking about Next.js and Docker. First, we need to install Docker on our local machine. I've included a link in the description so that you can choose your platform to install Docker. This will allow you to invoke Docker from the command line. So if I go over to VS Code and inside the terminal, I run docker-v, I'm able to see a version of Docker and confirm that I have it configured correctly on my command line. Now that we have Docker installed, we need to create a Docker file. This file tells Docker how to bundle our application or how to containerize it. Don't worry, you don't need to copy this exactly. I've included a link in the description where you can take the code that I'm showing here today. Alternatively, you can also use this command that I'm showing in the command line, mpx create next app example with Docker to get the exact code that I'm showing here on the screen. Now let's take a closer look at the Docker file. In the first stage of our multi-stage Docker file, which I'll explain more later, we are using the Linux Alpine distribution to install our dependencies. So we copy over our package JSON that lists all the dependencies, we run yarn, and we also freeze the lock file on that installation. So now when we get to the second stage of the build, we're only going to rebuild the source code when needed. So again, we're using Alpine as it's a slimmer distribution. We copy over these dependencies and we run yarn build. Finally, in the last stage of our multi-stage Docker file, we have the production image. So this is what we're calling our runner. We go into our app directory, we tell it that it's a production build, and we copy over the files that we need. You can also add some security groups in here. I don't know a lot about this, to be honest. And then you expose a port and you give a command that's going to start your application. So in this instance, the command to start the application is yarn start, which starts up our Next.js server. Really quick, I also wanna mention the docker ignore file, which tells Docker which things we don't need to include in our container. Okay, so let's open our terminal back up and we're going to actually build our image. So if you run docker build inside of this directory with the period here, and then we're going to call the tag for this Next.js Docker YouTube. I'll hit enter and you'll start to see that the first stage of our build is gonna kick off. First, we're going to download the Alpine distro. And then we start to get into the next stage of the build. We're doing the yarn installation. Now we're running our production build of our application. You'll notice that we see that output from there. We copy over the files. And then finally, we export that image and we have that locally now. The great thing about multi-stage Docker builds that are optimized is when I rerun this command, I've already fetched Alpine, I've already installed my dependencies, I've already built my application, and since nothing has changed, it's really, really fast. 0.5 seconds to rebuild this Docker container, whereas initially it took about 41 seconds. So you wanna use multi-stage Docker files if you can. If we type Docker images, we can also see all of the different images that we have available on our file system. So you see the one that I just created, Next.js Docker YouTube. We see the tag of latest and it was created 49 seconds ago. Finally, now that we've built our image, we can use Docker run. And in this instance, I'm passing along an environment variable of port of 3000 to our image of Next.js Docker YouTube. So when I hit enter, this is going to use that port, forward it along to next start, and start up our application at localhost 3000. Now I'm using an environment variable of port here and forwarding that along to next start specifically because we're going to be deploying to Google Cloud. If you just wanted to know how to use Docker with Next.js, you can stop right now. But if you wanna see now how to deploy your Docker containers, one option for doing that is called Google Cloud Run, which is a part of GCP or Google Cloud Platform. 
So let's talk about how we can actually do that. First things first, you'll need to install the Google Cloud SDK, which means that you can run gcloud commands from the command line. Then you can confirm it's installed by running gcloud-v to see the version of the SDK. And you can install this however you want. You can use Homebrew or use their instructions that they provide. You just wanna make sure that your path variable gets updated in your bash profile or your ZSHRC or whatever shell you're using. Next, let's go over to Google Cloud Platform where we can create a new project. Now I've already created a project, it's called Docker Next.js and that was now spun up and we can use this project in our gcloud commands so that we can run our Docker container in the cloud. If you haven't already run gcloud auth login, which will ensure that you're logged into the Google Cloud SDK. I'm gonna pick my personal account here, which I use to authenticate. It says I'm authenticated, awesome, I go back, we are good. One small side note, you'll wanna make sure that billing is turned on for this project. It's just a prerequisite of using Google Cloud Run. Next, we can build the container image of our application using Google Cloud Build. So this is going to enable Cloud Build for our project. It's going to use the tag that we specify of hello world on our project. And you see that we include the project flag of Docker Next.js. So this will actually build that Docker container in the cloud so that we can use it in Cloud Run. Okay, it looks like that's finished and we now have a tag for our image in Google Cloud. Finally, we can deploy our container to Google Cloud Run. So in this case, we're going to run this gcloud command to deploy our image. We're gonna call this service hello world. We're going to use Y to enable Google Cloud Run for this project. And just a side note here while we're talking, you can also set an environment variable so that you don't have to forward the project flag every single time. For simplicity here, I'm just gonna use that. Next, we specify what region we want to use. So I'm going to use 18 for US Central. And yes, we wanna allow these invocations to Hello World. And now our application is going to deploy to Cloud Run. All right, after a few minutes, our deployment has completed and we get this URL for our application deployed with Google Cloud Run. And now we should see our Hello World Next.js application. Woo, incredible. Hopefully this video has helped clear up how to use Docker with Next.js and also how to deploy those containers to the cloud. I'm not an expert on Kubernetes, so I probably won't be making a video on that, but let me know what other ideas you wanna see for videos in the comments below. Thank you so much.